So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy, Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. So listen, man, we're going to operate off the honor system. That's how we're going to start this video out. Honor system. If you are one of the people in this video, I'm going to need you to turn yourself in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But nah, bro, we about to get into the 10 most wanted by FBI. Now, I need to look back real quick. This video, okay, this video came out November 26th of 2020. So hopefully it's kind of like got the up-to-date, no really old ones. But if it do, so what? I like watching these type of videos and y'all do too, <laughs> low-key. Like, low-key, is something wrong with us. Uh, just admit it in the comment section, bro. If it's something wrong with you, just, just you know, raise a hand in the comments. <laughs> Shit. And I know what that means, bro. 10 most wanted by the FBI. Here we go. Number 10, Robert William Fisher. Robert William Fisher has been on the FBI's most wanted list since June of 2002 on suspicion of murdering his family. How do you be on the run that long, bro? They out here catching these people with these PPP loans like, like that. This dude murdered his whole family. 2002. And blowing up the house in which they lived in Scottsdale, Arizona. A Navy veteran, Fisher was described as controlling and cruel towards his family. On several occasions, his hunting partners reported disturbing behavior. This included Fisher smearing elk blood on his face after a hunt, as well as him sneaking up behind a family that was picnicking. Hang on, hit a hiccup so late. All right, there we go. Now, I don't go hunting, so for those of you that go hunting, Somebody smearing elk blood all over their body and they're just look, looking at you. You're next. That's all I'm gonna say, fam. You're next. Be careful out there. This is why I don't go hunting. And emptying his gun into the air, Fisher's wife had reportedly made up her mind to divorce him. In the evening of April the 9th of 2001, neighbors reported hearing a loud argument in their home. Later, an ATM recorded Fisher making a withdrawal with his wife's car in the background. In the morning, the house exploded. Firefighters managed to control the 20-foot blaze before it spread. Inside the home, they found three badly burnt bodies. The children, aged 12 and 10, had had their throats slashed from ear to ear, while Fisher's wife had been shot in the back of the head. The gas line from the house's furnace had been disconnected, and a candle was used to ignite the gas as it accumulated giving Fisher a 10-hour head start. While his whereabouts remain unknown, it's possible that Fisher was living off the land. Since he was an avid outdoorsman, skilled in hunting and fishing, he's considered armed and extremely dangerous with the FBI offering a reward of up to 100. See, this is the main thing I thought about. Now I'm never going back to the cabins. This is what I thought about out in the cabins. Because most, most of the people, excuse me, I'm, I still got hiccups and I have nothing to drink. Oh, I got some Pedialyte here. Don't judge me. I was on vacation. Got to ring myself out. But anyway, that's what I thought about mostly, man. Like being out in the woods. Granted, we had a great time, but I'm like, yo, most people who are on the run, they're out in the woods somewhere living off. Like they said, living off the land. I was prepared, trust me. I, I wasn't in there without something. I had a lot of things, but that's crazy, man. Like, be careful when you go to the cabins. That's all I'm trying to say. $100,000 for information leading to his arrest. Number nine, Alexis Flores. In the summer of 2000, a Philadelphia resident offered work, shelter, and clothing to a homeless drifter named Carlos. In August, the body of a missing toddler was found in an abandoned apartment building where Carlos was believed to be staying. Five-year-old Iriana de Jesus had been raped, strangled, and her lifeless body had been wrapped in a trash bag. A t-shirt, which Carlos's benefactor had given to him, was found near the victim, covered in her blood. The man was never found. A few years later, illegal immigrant Alexis Flores was arrested in Arizona after he presented fake identity documents to the authorities. 
A forgery device was found in his possession, which is a felony in the state. Flores' DNA was collected and introduced in a database. He spent 60 days in prison and upon his release in 2005, was deported to Honduras. DNA evidence then connected Torres to the De Jesus crime scene, proving that he and Carlos were the same person. There have been no significant updates on his location ever since he was added to the FBI's most wanted list. We had him, had him, and let him go. In 2007. Number eight, Jason Derrick Brown. Okay, I need to take a, a minute real quick and go make sure all your windows and doors is locked. Go do so now. Pause the video. Come back and then get back to it. I know you're looking around like, Yo, did I lock the door? Is that, am I alone? Uh, hearing strange noises in the house? To support his luxurious lifestyle and image of wealth, Jason Derrick Brown had allegedly operated check and bank fraud scams as well as various other confidence schemes. He also owned two legitimate businesses out of his home in Salt Lake City, Utah, but had racked up considerable debt. In November of 2004, outside an AMC theater in Phoenix, a hooded gunman ambushed an armored car guard. 24-year-old Robert Palomares was shot five times in the head with a 45 caliber Glock semi-automatic handgun. He was later pronounced dead. The shooter fled the scene on a bicycle with a money bag containing $54,000. Fingerprints lifted from the scene linked Brown to the ambush murder, and the authorities considered his desperate financial situation as the motive. Additionally, prior to the shooting, Brown had purchased the 45 Glock and had taken firearm lessons. Even though the FBI has received hundreds of leads since his disappearance, Brown's whereabouts remain unknown. It's believed that he's hiding in plain sight in Salt Lake City's Mormon community, or that he's fled the country to France or Thailand. Number seven, Yasser Abdel Said. Egyptian American man Yasser Abdel Said was on the run from the FBI for 12 years after the brutal honor killing of his daughters. Said had repeatedly beaten and sexually abused Amina and Sarah. They were terrified of him as he was extremely controlling of their lives and would constantly threaten to kill them. He reportedly felt they dishonored the family by refusing to adhere to Islam and traditional Egyptian behavior. And I know some people live by this certain code of no snitch and they won't, man, this dude raped his own children. Beat, raped, abused. Man, turn that fool in, man. Listen to what, no, no, no. If you need to hear it again, cause you know, some people just, <sighs> it's gonna piss me off. I, I see it coming. Egyptian American man Yasser Abdul Said was on the run from the FBI for 12 years after the brutal honor killing of his daughters. Said had repeatedly beaten and sexually abused Amina and Sarah. Now, so take your no, no snitching rule and shove it, bro. Look at these two little girls, man. Think of them. They were terrified of him as he was extremely controlling of their lives and were constantly threatened to kill them. He reportedly felt they dishonored the family by refusing to adhere to Islam and traditional Egyptian behavior. When she was only 16, Amina was taken to Egypt by Saeed for an arranged marriage to a much older friend of his. Amina refused the proposal and instead started dating an American teenager named Joseph Moreno. The two had made plans to run away together, get married in Las Vegas and start a new life. Moreno had dropped out of high school to make money and help Amina escape her father. Saeed became aware of the relationship and even though he brutally beat Amina, she never gave up Moreno's name. After Christmas in 2006, the sisters and their mother ran away to live with some of Moreno's relatives in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Saeed subsequently convinced his wife that he'd forgiven Amina and Sarah, claiming that he wanted them to return home. On January the 1st of 2008, he took the girls in the back seat of his taxi, kissed them and said they were going to get something to eat. Saeed then pulled out a gun and fatally shot them both. Sarah had managed to call 911 before she died screaming, help, my dad shot me, I'm dying, I'm dying. The man then fled and remained missing for over a decade. Saeed is the only fugitive on the FBI's most wanted list to have recently been captured. On August the 26th of 2020, SWAT teams arrested him without incident in Justin, Texas. Number Can't lie to you, I, I kind of wish that it said with incident, meaning something happened to him. 
Like, who has this stuff? Uh, how can you bring yourself to murder your own flesh and blood? Like, it's people that have just a disconnect that is insane to me, man. <laughs> no way on God's green earth I could ever fathom that. And he was just able to do it, no problem. Kiss him, tell him we're going to get something to eat and then murder him. <sighs> yeah, I wish something did happen to him. The six, Badresh Kumar Chetan Bai Patel. In April of 2015, Badresh Kumar Chetan Bai Patel and his wife, Palak, had traveled from India and were visiting relatives in the US. The couple, both in their 20s, were working the night shift at a Dunkin' Donuts in Maryland, which was owned by one of Patel's relatives. They had a violent argument in the kitchen, as Patel wanted them to stay in the US and Palak planned on returning to India. The man is believed to have brutally beaten his wife and stabbed her to death with a large kitchen knife. Surveillance footage would later show Patel fleeing the scene. Palak's body was found when customers who'd been waiting to be served alerted a passing police officer. The last time Patel was ever seen was on the morning of April the 13th of 2015 at Newark Penn Station in New Jersey. The authorities believe that he may have returned to India or even more likely that he's still hiding with relatives in the US. Number f How many people go to a Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts pretty much every day, every other day, a lot of times during the week, bro? And you probably interacted with whoever in North New Jersey, you probably interacted with this dude, man. That's crazy. This jealousy thing, bro. And people be sitting there taking that, oh, oh, he's jealous. Oh, it's so cute. It's cute till it's deadly. Five, Alejandro Castillo. Alejandro Castillo was placed on the FBI's most wanted list in October of 2017, a year prior when he was 17 years old. Castillo was working at a North Carolina restaurant alongside 22-year-old Truk Kwan, Sandy Lai Lee. They'd briefly dated, and Lee had sent Castillo some money. In August of 2016, Castillo told Lee to meet him at a convenience store so that he could pay back what he owed her. He was driven to the meeting spot by his new girlfriend, Amir Fista, aged 19. Once they arrived, it's believed that Castillo pulled out a gun and forced Lee to withdraw all the money from her account. Lee was then driven to a wooded area in Cabarrus County where Castillo fatally shot her in the head. The teenager and Fiesta afterwards crossed the border into Mexico. Fiesta subsequently turned herself into Mexican authorities. While on the run for the previous months, they'd been staying with Castillo's cousins in Aguas Calientes. However, at some point, Castillo disappeared and was never seen again. Number four, Rafael Caro Quintero. The FBI is currently offering $20 million for information leading to the dark. I don't think I've ever heard of a sum that large. 20 million? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's see what he did, bro. You know it's something crazy. Direct capture of drug kimpin, Rafael Caro Quintero. It's the highest value of all the fugitives on its list. Nicknamed the Narco of Narcos, Caro Quintero is the founder and suspected leader of the Caborca cartel. He also co-founded the notorious Guadalajara cartel, an organization which in the 1970s shipped enormous amounts of marijuana. Right, if you know where this dude is, you're probably dead by now. Like this dude, you could already tell. He, when, Whenever you hear the name cartel, you know it ain't nothing to play with. You know what I'm saying? Like if you see this dude, just run the other way. Just get away from him, like move, relocate. Like don't, don't make eye contact with this dude. Like, yeah, he wanted them to do it. 20 million might not be enough money, bro. You know what I'm saying? 20 million may not be enough money. Because you know if they get wind of you, it's not just you that's going to, they're going to come after you. It's you, your family, your bloodline, those associated with you, those who know your name, all that type of stuff. And cocaine into the U.S. Caro Quintero was responsible for the 1985 kidnapping, torture, and murder of DEA undercover agent Enrique Kiki Camarena. He's also wanted in direct connection with at least three other murders. For his crimes, Caro Quintero was arrested in Costa Rica and extradited to Mexico, where he was sentenced to 40 years in prison. However, the drug lord was released in 2013, when a state court concluded he'd been tried improperly. Corruption was suspected and due- I was just about to say that. 
somebody got paid off. Corrupt system, man. <laughs> Keep telling me it don't exist, bro. It exists. When your money is long like that, you have influence, and you probably have certain cops on the payroll, and you threaten people, probably held their family hot. Like, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it happens. Due to pressures from the US federal government, a Mexican federal court issued another arrest warrant. However, as of November 2020, Caro Quintero remains at large. Number three, Arnoldo Jimenez. On May the 11th of 2012, Arnoldo Jimenez and Estrella Carrera got married at Chicago City Hall. That night, they went clubbing with friends. They left the nightclub at about 4 a.m. and got into a heated argument during the drive back. While they were in his 2006 Maserati, Jimenez is believed to have stabbed Carrera multiple times. The woman's body was then dragged into her apartment and abandoned in the bathtub, still wearing the dress she donned at the wedding. In September of 2012, Jimenez's brother was arrested at his home for drug trafficking. The police searched the house and discovered Jimenez's Maserati inside the man's garage. Blood was found in the car. It's believed that Jimenez was driven to Mexico, where he's still hiding out to this day. Today's topic was requested by Dave Mader Jr. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section. Ladies, I better be careful out here, bro. Fellas, you too, because these ladies are just as ruthless and have you set up by some of these dudes on this list. So, you know what I'm saying? It's not just the ladies got. Fellas, watch out too. Below. Number two, Eugene Palmer. John Palmer, his wife Tammy, and their two children lived at a property in Stony Point, New York. The land was owned by Palmer's father, Eugene, who lived next door to them. Tammy and John started having marital problems and the woman filed for a restraining order against him. Tammy also threatened to sue for ownership of Eugene's land. In the morning of September the 24th of 2012, the woman walked her two children to the school bus. As she returned home, Eugene ambushed her from a wooded path and fatally shot her in the chest with a shotgun. Palmer fled the scene in a pickup truck, which was later found abandoned. Palmer has never been found, but the FBI suspects he might be hiding with relatives in Florida or in upstate New York. Number one, Jose Rodolfo Villarreal Hernandez. Jose Rodolfo Villarreal Hernandez was one of the leaders of the Beltran Leva cartel. Based There's that name again, cartel. Just, just run, just stay away. Extremely dangerous. In Mexico, Villarreal Hernandez's father had been killed by the Gulf Cartel, a rival criminal organization. Juan Jesus Guerrero Chapa was a lawyer for the rival cartel, whom Villarreal Hernandez viewed as personally responsible for his father's death. In May of 2013, Guerrero was already living in the U.S. as an FBI informant. Villarreal Hernandez hired two gunmen, identified only as Clorox and Captain, to assassinate Guerrero. The informant was tracked down to South Lake, Texas. The assassins pulled up to his car while Guerrero was out shopping with his wife. The woman was unharmed, but Guerrero was shot and killed. The gunmen were never found. Villarreal Hernandez remains at large, presumably still hiding in Mexico. A $1 million reward is being offered for information leading to his capture. Thanks for watching. It ain't twenty million dollars, but one million dollars is still a lot of money, which should should suggest to you stay away. Hey, I mean, if you can, if if you can turn him in from a from a safe distance, I mean, and when you're dealing with the cartel, is there really a safe distance? I don't think so. So I, I I'll be honest with you, I ain't no word. I don't even see him. I don't even see see them, bro. Not playing with the cartel at all, fam. Y'all get at me in the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought of this video, man. Ten most one. What would you do if you stumbled on one of the ten most wanted by the FBI? What would you do? And, and they work for the cartel. You gotta whisper the name. Yeah, I'm out. Peace.